Hey everyone, my name is Chris Anderson and I'm in Virgin Islands National Park. This park protects over half the island of St. John, preserving a tropical island ecosystem and over 5,000 acres of ocean habitat. But why is this island here? Matter of fact, why are all the other Virgin Islands islands too? Put on your sunscreen and down your freshest pair of shades. Today on Outsider Classroom, we're headed into the subduction zone. The island of St. John is one of the most beautiful places in the entire United States and its territories. Its green hills seem to just pop out of the sea and is home to some of the most pristine beaches on earth. It's one of hundreds of small mountainous islands called the Lesser Antilles that stretch from Puerto Rico all the way down to South America. But much like the whale sharks that live off the coast, this is more than a little fishy. Who are you calling fishy? It's a lot of small, rugged islands in one place. Don't you think? What are they all doing here? Remember, the crust, the outermost layer of the Earth, is broken up into pieces called tectonic plates. The plates kind of fit together like a jigsaw puzzle as they float on top of the mantle. But they don't just stay still. They meander around the Earth at the rate of a couple inches a year. They grind past one another, separate, and collide. And it's here in the Caribbean where we can find the results of some awesome geologic activity. St. John sits at the east end of the Caribbean plate. It's a smaller plate sandwiched between the North American plate, where that continent resides, and the South American plate, which is home to, well, South America. Let's turn back the clock a bit, shall we? Back in the heyday of the dinosaurs, South America and Africa were connected as one giant landmass. But around 100 million years ago, that landmass began to break up. As the South American plate separated from the African plate, it collided with the Caribbean plate. Scientists call this a convergent plate boundary, when two or more plates collide. But the plates didn't just collide. The South American plate got pushed underneath the Caribbean plate. For the last hundred million years, those forces are what built all these small little islands. But why did one plate get pushed underneath another? And how does that create a whole chain of islands? Let's ask a geochronologist. Hi, I am Dr. Carolina Ortiz Guerrero, and I am a geologist, and I use geochronology to solve tectonic questions. So as two plates will converge, they can, two things can happen. Um, we can form mountains, like for example, the Himalayas mountain range, because there are big forces that are pushing up with against the other and they will start creating mountains. Or actually we can also have subduction zones. And these are places in which there is going to be one tectonic plate which is going to be more dense. And this tectonic plate will start sinking below the other tectonic plate that is on top. So when the plate that is the more dense plate is being subducted, this plate will start to release some fluids, like let's say, for example, water. And water makes the mantle to start melting. So as the mantle starts melting, it will produce magma that will find its way up into the surface and will start to um, create volcanic rocks once they reach the surface. This has caused to, um, volcanic rocks to be erupted in the bottom of the seafloor. So the oldest of these rocks on this volcanic arc started to accumulate in the bottom of the seafloor a hundred million years ago. 
this volcanism, after millions of years, started to accumulate and pile up one on top of the other, like layers. And when they reach the surface, this uh, edifice that we call is already a volcano, right? So now the volcanism that has also built up these islands has also been volcanism that has been explosive and that has happened above the sea level. Um, so this has happened across millions of years. It's a process that has taken a lot of time right now. The islands of the Caribbean are essentially a partially submerged mountain range. In fact, the same forces that built these islands are the ones that built the Cascade Mountain Range in the Pacific Northwest. There's actually more mountains to this range, they're just under the surface of the ocean. Which brings us to another important geologic feature that's just off the coast of St. John, the Puerto Rico Trench. It runs for 500 miles along the ocean floor and can be over five miles in depth in some places. So what's it doing here? Ocean trenches form in active subduction zones. As one plate is pushed underneath the other, a trench forms in the space between the plates. Because these islands lie so close to a plate boundary, they're places of high geologic activity. The island of Hispaniola, which is home to both Haiti and the Dominican Republic, has experienced several minor and two major earthquakes in the last 20 years. And while St. John and the rest of the Virgin Islands are no longer home to any active volcanoes, a few islands are. The island of Montserrat is just 200 miles to the southeast and in 1997 experienced a major eruption that destroyed dozens of buildings and killed 19 people. And in 2021, St. Vincent erupted, forcing the evacuation of over 20,000 residents. And these plates are still moving, generating tons of pressure as trillions and trillions of tons of rock gets pushed into each other. All that's to say is that Virgin Islands National Park is here because of those geologic forces. This beautiful island, home to hundreds of species of birds, tropical fruit trees, and wonderful people, is here because two plates converged and one being subducted under the other. The plates built hundreds of islands across the Caribbean, and they're still at work today. Virgin Islands National Park is a great place to visit. You can scuba or snorkel on the reefs, hike through tropical mountain forests, and of course, relax on some of the prettiest beaches in the world. But when you visit, remember, you're darn close to the equator, and that sunlight is gonna hit you pretty much dead on. You can get dehydrated and sunburned a lot faster than you realize. My advice when visiting the tropics is to put on sunscreen, reef safe, of course, every couple hours, especially if you're going to be in the water. Wear a hat or long sleeve shirts if you're gonna be outside all day. Don a fresh pair of shades and make sure you drink at least a liter of water, if not more. Heck, I try to do all my adventures early in the morning or later in the evening to avoid the sun as it's most intense. Now, no one's saying you gotta wear a white t-shirt when you go swimming. Well, my mom told me that, but you don't have to. The point is, protect yourself against the sun. In addition to conserving precious tropical ecosystems, Virgin Islands National Park also protects dozens of cultural heritage sites. You can find petroglyph carvings from the indigenous Tayano people that date before European colonization. You can also find the remains of sugar plantations, a solemn reminder of the island's history of slavery. When you visit, make sure to be respectful. You can take pictures, read and learn about the different sites, but leave things as they are. Don't touch any artifacts and certainly don't take anything. Not only is it super wrong, it's also super illegal and you can get super finder, even super jail time.
that's our show. Thanks for watching. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have some seismic waves that need to be triangulated. We'll see you next time on Outsider Classroom. Want to learn more about our national parks? Then hit that subscribe button, friend. Stay up to date and catch bonus features by following us on Instagram, at Outsider.